Thank you so much uh, for the introduction, and I want to thank uh, the Bernard Van Leer Foundation and all the organisers uh, for inviting me here. I'm really excited to be here. And I'm going to be talking a little bit more about play. Uh, we heard Selva say some things about play and why it matters and particularly how we get, how we embrace uncertainty and risk in children's play. So, one of the things about human beings, we heard earlier the rector talking about human beings spreading across the planet. For better or worse, we are the dominant species on this planet. And one of the reasons why we are the dominant species on this planet is because the young of our species, children, are nature's most efficient learning machines. So many animals can adapt quickly. You can see the, the horse or the deer, a few hours after they're born, they can stand up, they can move around, they can feed themselves. The young of our species are very dependent on parents and others to look after them for two, three, four, five years in their lives. But they are also incredible sponges of learning. They soak up information and, and quickly work out, or over those first few years, figure out a huge amount about how the world works, about their place in it, about what they can do. And much of that learning happens through play. And yet, when we look at modern cities and we look at the spaces that we create for play, yes, these are the kind of spaces that we offer to children. So I, I want you to see the contrast between this powerful learning and adaptive impulse of children and these kind of spaces. And I want to suggest that we can do better. So, I want to help you see a little bit more about this rich learning impulse called play. And to do that, I'm going to show you a piece of video footage. So this is a video of some uh, four-year-old children who are in a forest, and it's called Forest School. And the idea is that the children are being taken into the forest with educators, um, but they're not being taught they're being allowed to learn through their play and through their exploration. So what you're going to watch is just a couple of minutes of a group of children exploring and playing in the woods with educators around them. And I want you to watch carefully and I want you to think about what are these children learning? What are they getting from the experience? What are the... the What's these experiences helping to equip them for their lives as children and as adults? So, I will cross my fingers for the technology. I will give my thumbs up to the uh, technician and we will see the video now.
Okay, so what I now want you to do is to turn to the person next to you and to just share your thoughts with them. I'm going to give you two minutes to just talk about what each of you thought the children were getting from that experience, and then I'll try and pull it together afterwards. Okay, so please talk to your neighbours. Okay, maybe a little bit less than two minutes, but uh, I, I have a little time. So I'm going to guess the kind of things you're talking about, and I, I'm going to look for some nods or some shakes. I th hope you were talking about the children uh, having fun. It was enjoy they were enjoying what they were doing. They were engaged. They were, of course, moving and using their bodies, learning what their bodies could do. They were balancing. Uh, they were working as a team. They all came together to clear away the uh, branches. Um, they were communicating with each other. There was a lot of talking going on. They were figuring out the risks. They were managing the risks. Yes, they, were, they could feel that this was a challenge. This was adventurous. Yeah? This was a little bit dangerous. And they couldn't just run across that tree. They had to go across carefully. So they were learning to manage the risks in that situation. And let's think a little bit about that girl at the back. I hope you are watching the girl at the back. She didn't cross the tree. Yeah, she didn't go across. And maybe she felt a little bit sad. Maybe she will try again next time. Maybe she will cross. Maybe she won't cross. Maybe she is just a, a cautious girl. But here's the thing, she learned, what did she learn from that experience? She learned what it feels like to be outside your comfort zone, yes? To be somewhere where you don't feel safe. She could feel that in her stomach and she did something about it. And she got out of that unsafe situation and she got to a place where she felt safe again. So she was, that was a resilient response. It was her overcoming that challenge. And if you think about these girls, okay, they're four years old now, but if you think about them, they're not four years old and they're in the woods, but maybe they're 16 or 17 years old and they're going to their first party, yes? And then you're saying, are these young people ready to deal with challenges? Do they know what it feels like to be unsafe? and how to get out of an unsafe situation. So that, a lot of those experiences are very powerful and very valuable for us. But here's the thing, some of that learning only happened because of the risks. Yes, because it was a little bit dangerous, because the children were not sure that they could get across. And if you try to make it completely safe, then the children would not have so much interest, they would not be so excited, they would not feel that sense of achievement at the end, and they would not have that learning about how to deal with risky situations. So I hope you can see how learning to deal with risk and uncertainty runs through children's play like blood through their veins. So, there's a connection here because as children grow up, they gradually become better at things. They become more responsible. They learn their own capacities. They can get very good at things. So 
one of the things that happens in childhood is that a gradual transfer of responsibility from adults to children. And that transfer of responsibility starts happening at a pretty early age. But if we make the steps too hard, if we, if we manage the risks and we, manage the, we do all the things for children too much and for too long, then sooner or later, the step gets big and it can get too big. And so we leave children unable to cope with responsibility when they get older. So that's, that's I think, a, one of the reasons why uncertainty at ri and risk are, or should be, at the heart of our thinking about children's play and children's lives. So, uh, I've shown you one picture of a playground earlier. This is another playground from England. I hope you agree it, it's really not up to the job. This was built maybe in the 1990s, but now I'm going to show you a picture of another public playground. This was built in London in 2012. This is the Tumbling Bay Playground in the Queen Elizabeth Olympic Park in London. It's one of the most high-profile playgrounds that's been built. I hope you agree it looks a little bit different to the playground I just showed you. Here is another scene from this playground. Uh, it's a really rich environment. It's challenging. It invites children to explore, to get lost, to climb, to find out how things work. And, and there is some danger in this playground. These are real rocks here. They're not fake rocks. They're not made of plastic. Um, that this climbing thing, that's really high. That's five meters high. So, how can we build playgrounds like this? Isn't everybody afraid of being sued or being blamed? No, because in England, those of us who are involved in playgrounds, and I was one of them, we realized that that's, that super safe model was taking us in the wrong direction. It was a waste of money. It was not good for children. Uh, and frankly, children were getting bored. So we came up with a new approach to playground safety and to thinking about risk. Um, that's the report of that um, new approach. And at the heart of the new approach was that instead of taking a, a tick box approach, yes, you go around and say, oh, you, you cannot have this drop here because this drop is too high. You take a risk benefit approach. You think about the benefits that children get from having challenging and adventurous and exciting offers. And that approach has led to a, a complete rethink about playground design in England and uh, in the UK, I should say. It's not the case everywhere, but we're seeing now some truly adventurous and um, rich and challenging public play spaces. Now, I'm a numbers person. So I like to think of numbers. So you're maybe thinking, yes, but children do have accidents on playgrounds. I will tell you, playgrounds are not dangerous places. This chart, this chart shows you how likely you are, how likely you are to end up in hospital. So if you really want your child to end up in hospital from the different activity, you should get them to play rugby. Do you know rugby? Yes. Or football, soccer. Um, if you're looking for playgrounds on that list, there you are. Playgrounds are a little bit uh, more dangerous than fishing and a little bit less dangerous than sailing. Playgrounds are not dangerous places for children. So, why does this matter? Here's a beautiful quote that I will share with you from a Danish landscape architect who's a genius. And she says, I'm convinced that standardized playgrounds are dangerous in another way. When the distance between the ladders is exactly the same, the child has no need to think about where he puts his feet. This lesson cannot be carried over to the knobbly and asymmetrical forms of life. Yes, if we want to help children be ready for a, an uncertain but exciting life, we need to give them knobbly and asymmetrical forms. And yes, sometimes that means children might get hurt. But 
Children do get hurt. It's part of childhood to, to fall over, rub your knees and get up again. And here's another nice quote. This is a Canadian landscape architect. Uh, he talks about we need to distinguish between a learning injury and a catastrophic injury. Okay? I hope you can see that. And in case you're thinking about uh, the science behind this, the studies, we have some studies that show that what's sometimes called risky play, play where children want to take risks, they run fast, they climb, they hide, that kind of play, actually the benefits outweigh the risks. So uh, Mariana Brussoni, who's a really smart researcher from uh, Vancouver, gathered together with her colleagues all the studies on the injuries that happen when children play and also the benefits, the physical activity benefits, the learning benefits, and showed that the benefits outweigh the risks. And she, she's an injury prevention academic. Okay? She spends her life figuring out how to reduce injuries. And she is a champion of risky play. And she says, we've become increasingly concerned that some of our efforts to keep children safe might be doing unintended harm. This must give us pause for thought. So Bernard Van Leer Foundation commissioned me, I've been working, looking at risk for many years, to write a white paper, a report, which is called Playing It Safe. And the message I'm sharing with you, and the message I tell whenever I speak around the world on this topic, is this. We need a more thoughtful, balanced, holistic approach. The play safety needs to take proper account of the benefits of risky, challenging play experiences. And I hope you can see that from your own lives and your own experiences. So I'm going to share with you now one of those final quotes that you see from the internet or Facebook. Yes, this quote, great things never come from comfort zones. I hope you can see that's true of children, but I think it's also true of you and of me and of all of us as parents, as teachers, as playground designers, as architects. We need to get outside of our comfort zones if we want to do great things for ourselves and for our children. Thank you very much.